Hello everyone. Welcome to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, The Health Talk Session. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the evolution of cancer therapy. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and let's welcome Director of Surgical Oncologist from Yashoda Hospital's Sikindrabad. Welcome, Doctor. Hello everybody. I'm Dr. Hemant Uday Raju. I'm a surgical oncologist and a robotic surgeon. I practice at Yashoda Hospital, Sikindrabad. So, Doctor, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, so my field of interest is uh, recent advances in cancer surgery and uh, I am uh, a minimally invasive cancer surgeon in the sense like we do cancer surgeries of the thorax and abdomen and complex com cancer surgeries without opening up the patient through a keyhole uh, surgery. So you can call me a keyhole cancer surgeon. So surgical oncologist, what made you choose this field sir? Uh, it's a difficult question to answer. Uh, this is a question that I have been answering from the day I have entered oncology till now. I was an All India number one ranker in uh, the super speciality entrance. And when the trend was people taking neurosurgery and urology and uh, cardiothoracic surgery, I opted to go for uh, oncosurgery. So my teachers actually pulled me up and then asked me, why do you want to take this field? And there's so many better fields. This was 20 years ago, approximately 20 years ago. And I'm glad I made that decision. In fact, I remember telling my teachers that in the next 20 years, a lot is going to change in oncology and oncosurgery, and it has. So oncosurgery today is the, the hottest subject. Today, as somebody who wants to specialize, wants to take oncosurgery. So this is a move that I have made 20 years ago, and I'm very happy for that. So the word cancer is still associated with so much negativity and stigma around this. So how do you deal with this, sir? Oncology is a serious subject. Cancer is a serious disease. It is a life-threatening disease, as is any other disease. It is a life-threatening problem, but not always. The problem in cancer in oncology is that most of the times, by the time we diagnose cancer, by the time we know that the patient is suffering from this problem, the damage is already done. 70 to 80 percent of patients in India present in the third and fourth stage out of four stages. Rarely we see stage one, stage two where the disease is absolutely curable. This is a message that we want to send across very clearly that if you pick up the problem when it is small, if you venture out, get a few tests when you, when you have those minor symptoms and by chance if it does turn out to be cancer and it is treatable and very curable as well. Most people suffer more because of the misinformation and the negative image that this particular disease carries in the society rather than the disease itself. This needs to change. Like any other disease, if you can pick up cancer in the early stages, in stage 1, stage 2, apply the right therapy. The therapy is unfortunately slightly longer than in, in other diseases where you need surgery, you might need chemotherapy, you might need radiation. The treatment Typically is about two months, three months, and it is a little troublesome, I accept. But then patients who undergo this treatment, who accept, who accept this treatment well, go on to do really well in their lifetime, and a lot of them are cured as well. So the, a question that I commonly ask everybody is: how many cancer patients have you come across who are doing well? If there is somebody in your society, in your family, in your colony, amongst your relatives who have succumbed to cancer, who have suffered because of cancer, the entire society will come to know about it. But how many success stories do you know? If there is someone who's got cancer, who's treated, who's doing really well, does he put his hand up and say, yes, I have been treated 10 years ago, I'm doing well? No, we don't, we don't hear success stories in cancer. We hear only the negative stories in cancer. That is why you have a complete negative image about this disease. A lot is changing. In the last few years, you have uh, a lot of cancer awareness programs going on where celebrities, where normal people, people from all, all walks of life come and say that, yes, I've had this disease, I'm surviving, I'm doing really well. So that kind of positivity needs to be brought about by raising awareness campaign. So the key to beat cancer is not just good treatment, it's raising awareness and increasing the confidence of these patients to tell them that they are going to be normal like each and any one of us. I think that's well said sir, about raising awareness in cancer. So what were the challenges you faced in this field when you initially started this career? I mean, what changes did you see? A lot has changed in these treatments as well. When we were postgraduates 15, 20 years ago, when we were training, there were very few uh, treatment modalities available. Today, the patient can choose from a ra varied range of treatment options that we have. 
We do what are called as radical surgeries in cancer surgery, that is removal of a major part of the body. Whichever part of the body gets affected by cancer needs to be removed. Those are called radical surgeries. We have changed a lot in terms of radicality with better understanding of the disease, with better diagnostic imaging modalities and all that. We don't do very, very radical surgeries today. We get the entire disease out preserving the form and function of the organ in which the disease arises. So we do a function preserving surgery these days which makes the patient recover very rapidly. We do major surgeries of the cancers of the esophagus that is the food pipe, cancers of the stomach, intestine without even opening up the patient. We do keyhole surgeries which helps the patient. The surgery remains the same, the radicality remains the same. But the recovery of the patient is very fast because instead of opening up the patient, you have done the surgery through small keyholes. The patient goes home on the second, third day versus two to three weeks earlier. So doctor, talking about latest advancements in the field of cancer, what is the role of robotic surgery? Robotic surgery is an advancement uh, in uh, surgical technique where surgery remains the same, but the access changes in the sense in order to operate upon the intestine, we had to actually open up the patient, the entire abdomen, and then we had to operate. Nowadays, using three or four small one inch, one centimeter incisions, that is the entire opening of the patient becomes about four centimeters through multiple small keyholes. We send instruments inside which are connected to a computer navigated uh, device. The surgery is done by the surgeon, but the instruments are held by a, a navigation system which mimics the surgeon's movement. It's as though the surgeon is sitting inside the abdomen with a three-dimensional view with a miniature hands and then operating. So this has an advantage of very precise surgery. The blood loss for the patient is very minimal. We don't have to use blood transfusions. The recovery is very rapid. The patient's requirement for painkillers, requirement for antibiotics, requirement of ICU stay, overall hospital stay, everything is lessened. Currently, the cost benefit scenario is probably a little on the costlier side, but in future, I think robotic surgery is going to take over almost all complicated surgeries, especially cancer surgeries. It's going to be a major sea change which is going to happen in the next few years is what I foresee. So doctor, I'm sure you spend most of your time in the hospital. So apart from work, what you would like to do in your free time? Uh, I am a fitness enthusiast. I'm into long distance running and I find it really meditative. I, I run marathons, so I, I aim to do about one full marathon that is 42 kilometer run per year and about two or three half marathons, which are like 21 kilometer runs. So I uh, exercise every uh, uh, four to five uh, uh, days a week and my every Sunday is a 15 to 20 kilometer run with a close group of friends. So that's how I de-stress. I find it really, really uh, relaxing, really, um, uh, I mean, uh, it's almost like my meditation and that's what I would advise everybody else. Uh, I mean, each of us should have uh, something to de-stress. It could be music, it could be your uh, uh, some fitness uh, thing or one could be uh, a hiker or, uh, or it could be gymming or swimming or, or running or something like that, which which is actually, it, it not only uh, improves your physical health, but it does a lot for your mental health as well. And uh, which is which is something which a lot of people don't realize. Eh? The best way to de-stress is actually to spend about 35, 40 minutes for, with yourself doing some kind of a physical activity. Long marathons, I think that's impressive and inspiring at the same time. So how did you get into this fitness streak? Uh, by accident, actually, like, uh, mm, Running marathons is probably uh, not uh, very intentional, but then I was uh, uh, regular with my fitness habits. So I used to do treadmill run and all. One day my treadmill broke down. I, I just ventured out to run in um, the Usmania University, which is next to my home. And I met a couple of friends who were like me from different walks of life. And then they just took me along. And so this, I mean, seven, eight years now. So it's like my, my fitness group is my immediate family. There's, not a single day that I don't venture out, go talk to them, meet them. If I don't do that, it's like uh, some part of my life is missing. So doctor, talking about the importance of fitness and diet, what are the other preventive measures one can take as far as cancer is concerned? Most of the Indian cancers are related to tobacco. I can say that about 30 to 40% of Indian cancers 
the mouth cancer, tongue cancer, esophageal cancer are related to tobacco usage. So if tobacco usage is stopped, if people maintain good oral hygiene, good personal hygiene, significant amount of cancers can then and there be prevented at a sweep. So 30% of cancers are off. And second thing is maintaining proper good nutritious diet and weight for age. So a good mix of proper hygiene, a good nutritious diet, maintenance of weight, physical activity, shunning a, a sedentary lifestyle can itself make a huge amount of uh, change in uh, the cancer incidence in our country. Early diagnosis that is not ignoring persistent symptoms is a very important key in diagnosing cancer early. So if you maintain these few small things then you can easily beat cancer and prevent cancer also. So as a healthcare cancer specialist, what message you would like to give to the society? As a part of the awareness, cancer awareness campaign, we do a awareness run every year which uh, involves about uh, 5 to 10,000 participants from different walks of life including cancer patients. So there is this uh, very funny incident where uh, uh, we register the cancer victors as we call them for a 2 kilometer walk. Apart from that, there is a 5 and a 10 kilometer run. So we make the cancer patients, we encourage them to, those who have survived cancer, to do a 2 kilometer walk. So one of my old patients, uh, a very fit gentleman, he, he comes up and he says, Sir, I don't want to walk this 2 kilometers. I actually want to run the 10 kilometers. Why can't I do a 10 kilometer run? Then I had to tell him, Sir, this year we'll do a 2K walk. Next year I will run with you, we, together we'll do a 10 kilometer run. I said, okay, on that condition I'll walk 2 kilometers. So this is a message which actually needs to go across to people where the people need to realize that cancer is something which is absolutely beatable. You can just move on and be a normal person and um, be a cancer conqueror. Thank you, doctor. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you, everyone. It was a good, wonderful interaction. So this brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you all for watching us and do join us for the next week as well. Thank you and take care.